Okay, chapter six. So chapter six is about this concept called type safety, which is this nebulous concept that people just like throwing around without knowing what it means. So most programming languages are safe or type safe or strongly typed. Uh, people use those words like really kind of loosely to me, a lot of different stuff. So I think I will just stick with type safe um, for what this book is talking about. And informally, the type safety just means certain kind of mismatches, type mismatches cannot arise during execution. And the type system for our language E, we previously talked about that a number cannot be added to a string. We, we cannot concatenate to numbers, just those kind of stuff. And also type safety is said to express a coherence between the static and the dynamic of the language. So, this, the static already predicts what kind of dynamic of the expression is well defined. And, uh, and, uh, the informal statement of whether a language is type safe is an evaluation cannot get stuck. This, this stuck doesn't mean infinite loop though. Infinite loop doesn't stuck. It still continue like running forward even though our program does get stuck. It means, it means the, we don't have any well-defined transition for the program state to go forward. So this is like, for example, undefined behavior in C and C++ where we are into this territory where the language definition says, you are done basically, we have nothing to do at here. And the computer can, computer will just do whatever. So the type CST formally, formally it have two part. The first part is called preservation, which states that if an expression have some type and then we have a state of evaluation, uh, we have a step of evaluation, then the type doesn't change. To be honest, like, I, I don't know how, how this can be violated unless the language definition is seriously messed up, but yeah, you just, just, you cannot seriously mess up the language definition. Say we add two number and we get a string back. And the, the second part is, The second part is that if we have a, a expression that have certain types, then this expression either is a value. So a value is like the, like the final state of the transition. So it cannot do any further transition or there exists a state E prime that we can do some transition. That means we will never in a state 
which is not a value, and we can't do any transition. Can you understand this part? Yeah, and it's all good. So for, I was going to say on the yeah. so on the preservation you mentioned like to violate I guess kind of like the naive definition of division does right like the example he gives later yeah yeah like yeah if you just said it was numb Or like in JavaScript, but I guess in JavaScript, any expression have the type any kind of, so it still doesn't violate this. Oh yeah, yeah. And first, so, uh, those kind of things, those kind of things, pres preservation and the, the progress, those is when we have a language, we language definition, then we can prove that by reinduction. For example, for for a rule like this, for a rule like this, we uh, for for a rule like this, we uh, we know that. A plus e even and e two is a number, and even e two is a number by version of type. We, yeah, we know even and e two is a number, and we know. We also know this at this side the plus e e prime even prime and e two is a number, and also by inversion of typing. E one prime is a number. So everything is a number. We know the type is preserved and it is fine. And this is this is a little bit a little bit more complicated, but we know we know the type of this is actually the type of E2. And Similarly, type of the right hand side is the type of E2. So, we just need to do the same kind of rule for every rule in the language. And this part, this part is probably if we want to prove that for a large language, we need some kind of automation to do that. But it is very naturally structured as rule induction. We just need to prove every rule follows follows this property, and then we can conclude that uh, we have this property for the language. And the I guess the progress one is a more interesting property. It states that a well-typed well program cannot get stuck. The first, the proof depends on the following lemma. So the lemma used to categorize the value of each type. Uh, so, Mm, 
so this lemma canonical form is like each type we need to categorize what is the value of that type. In our, in our case, in our case, our type is so simple. So our canonical form is also simple. If tau is a number, then the expression is some kind of number ASD node. And similarly, if the if the type is a string, then the expression is some kind of string. And and we can actually prove that by again by rule induction. Once once we proved uh, once we proved that. Then for therefore proving the progress, proving the progress is it's easier because for example, in this case, we can just assume that E1 and E2 are some number nodes. We don't need to consider the case that even is actually a string and then we put it here. And and then then the progress prop uh, the progress theorem just states that um, if this expression, this expression uh, have type tau, then it is either a value or there exists a transition. And uh, we can again by, uh, by doing rule induction, we um, Or it, it's a little, oh, it's a while after I read this, it's like two weeks ago. Oh uh, yeah, so we need to do reintroduction for this. So either so either so by the induction hypothesis, either even is a value. Or even has a even has a transition to even prime. If even has a transition to even prime, we can just say plus even e2 has a transition to plus e even prime and e2. And if even is a value, then we have another rule. If you remember, we have another rule um, where we can do the same thing with E2. And if E2 is also a value, then we have another rule to just say even this is like the value of E1 plus value of E2, like here. So we, act we actually need all, all three of our rules for the even E2 to perform this uh, for the plus. So if we go back, I will, so with our rule induction of plus, we use all three of our rules to prove the case. So 
sorry. And uh, and uh, and then the summing up is just like the combination of preservation and progress together is a proof of safety. This safety this safety form is actually really mechanical. It's that's why a lot of people say like this this safety doesn't stay too much, but. It does, does, it does ensure that a well-typed expression cannot get stuck into some like ill-defined states or aka undefined behavior. With at least with our language definition. And, and then say that we have this, we have this typing rule. And then we have the dynamic same to plus as, as we said before, this naive definition of division has a problem, but yeah, it's not, it doesn't necessarily violate the, well, it's a preservation though, because our typing rule is still like, it's the division is always a number, but, but it gets stuck because we don't have a rule for divided by zero. And then we have two options where it's enhance the type system. So, and no well type of program may divide by zero. If we want to go this route, we need to completely kind of redo how we do number. We need to use some natural numbers like some dependently typed languages and it's complicated stuff. And to be honest, not, not very useful. Well, I guess it's useful in certain cases, but the, most scenarios language do is add dynamic checks so that div division by zero is an error. Yeah, actually, you're right. This doesn't uh, uh, do anything or like contradict preservation at all. I, yeah, so it is actually pretty confusing. Like, because you would have to both type something and then give a rule to a transition. So like you would yeah. be self contradicting to break preservation. Yeah. Now we can add the adds we can add the like division by zero actually produce produce a, like <laughs> I don't know. A string, let's say. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah, it mentioned the first the first approach where we enhancing the type system required the type checker to prove that an expression to be non-zero before permitting to be used in denominator. And this is a really hard problem, especially with our current definition of number. 
we need something like a natural number, then it's easier, but still it can easily ruling out too many valid program as yield form. And that's always a trade-off between like type systems, the, how, how much power we want to put into type system because if it's too strict, then it can rule out too, too many good programs. And uh, the overall idea of the second approach is distinguish the checked error with, uh, uh, from so-called unchecked error. So the unchecked error is ruled out by our type system and thus no runtime checking is performed. For example, we don't check for adding to strings. And on the other hand, on the other hand, division by zero must have some runtime check. And the one way one way to do one way to do that is to Give some give an induction def, inductive definition of the judgment uh, called error, which states that this expression this expression is an error basically. And we can. We can have the we can have the following dynamic. As, as we can see that uh, that if we divide by zero, we get an error, and error also error also property propagate. No, it's it's become a little a little bit more complicated since like for every other rules we also need to handle this if the expression is the error. And when this once we have the error judgment, we can also consider expression. This error explicitly introduced an error. And it has it, it can have any type. And it is always an error. So this is like uh, in some language when uh, no, not in some language, in all language, for example, when you throw exception, you, you don't change the return type. So this is just, uh, just uh, the same kind of thing to ensure that this error will not change the type of, if error is part of the expression, it, it can kind of plug into everywhere. And with all of that setup, we can state this theorem, which is our progress, but with the error case, which is that for an expression that it is either a value or 
Oh, as a as a, a runtime error or value, or there exists a e prime such that we can do transition. And the proof is by induction again. And then there's a note about the concept of hype safety was first uh, formulated by Miller, we, who first invented the slogan, we all typed program do not go wrong. Unfortunately, a lot of people misunderstand this statement. And it's usually this go wrong part uh, with they just they just state something like well types programs cannot have bugs, which is completely false. <laughs> so but, but be nice. But but what? That would be nice if well type programs didn't have bugs. <laughs> Yeah, I guess in a really, really strict language. They have well typed no, bug. Yeah, <laughs> can, it's always, we used to always have logic bugs. Like you misunderstand the requirement, for example, how, how to route this with a type system. Yeah, no way. But it is certainly possible, like a language is so strong, you completely don't need unit test. But in that case, the language is also very limited. OK, so I remember uh, we uh, I talked about small step and big step semantics before. In this book, it's called Structural Dynamics and Evaluation Dynamics. And in the chapter five, we talk about structural dynamics, which is like just small step. We, we kind of just step forward one step at a time. And the evaluation dynamic is like directly evaluate an expression into a value. And there's also an extension called cost dynamics, which enrich the evaluation dynamics with a cost measure. So evaluation dynamic, evaluation dynamic is much simpler than the um, than the previous uh, stru structural dynamic, where we just, uh, first of all, you have the value case, value case, their evaluation doesn't change at all. Then, then for, for like those rules, notice that we just have one rules per node. We don't, we don't need three rules because even E2 is already reduced into a value. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I don't know if this person entered the waiting room by now. I don't know if this is.
let's admit that and say if this person So this is this is a by name interpretation of lead, which it means it is lazy. Because, because we we don't we don't evaluate E1 directly, but instead we substitute E1 into E2. And and then evaluate this substitution. And if we want a by value inter by value interpretation, we need to use this. I thought it was interesting that he like seem to prefer the by name because I thought earlier in like the structural dynamics it was like by value was the first one that he introduced yeah I don't think he prefer anything he he just want to say the distinction just want to show there are two different semantics for that I get okay, yeah. I guess by prefer, I just meant it seemed like he used the by name in the the proof example or something. Yeah. Which maybe is just to show, or, yeah. I don't know what the motivation was then. Yeah, I guess the motivation is just show there is two different semantics. And at least our language is still pure now, so everything is much simpler. And we can still do reinduction with with this evaluation dynamics. It's and it's much simpler because our rule set is much smaller. We just like have five cases to show. And there is a lemma, which is if we evaluate into something, then that something is a value, which is we kind of just take for granted, but we can actually show that by just looking at this value, this value, this value, value value and for this one we guess we need to use some proper induction but but uh If this is value, this evaluated into a value, then this is value, I guess. Well, it's when the premise, the V2 is in the premise, so it has to be a value by the induction hypothesis. Yeah, yeah. And so then carries through to the conclusion, so it's a value. Yeah. So the structural dynamic and the evaluation dynamics, we need to somehow to prove their equivalence. 
And we have another theorem which states for all closed expression E and value V, if we just to use a structure dynamics that uh, that uh, it just step through until it is a value then it is equal to equal to the evaluation dynamic. And notice the if and only if here, which means when we prove that we need to prove two separate directions. And both direction we can prove by rule induction. Just like we need to prove this direction and this direction. Notice this direction, we, we don't actually, we, we only need to prove one step and we don't need to prove the whole thing. And because it's just, just one step and then we can just use induction. And then it start, uh, the book start to talk about type safety again. So the chapter six describe type 60 and as preservation uh, and the progress. For the preservation, we can still prove that. Unfortunately for progress, we cannot prove that by this. Because evaluation dynamic only it uh, cannot distinguish between errors and uh, between uh, uh, distinguish, sorry, not errors, but cannot distinguish between whether the program is stuck or it just never terminate. And in, and in here, it says the same, we, we have a stronger requirement if we want to prove the um, progress. Let's say if, if the sum expression is tall, then that expression evaluates into the value. And then it says, although this, this property is true for E, it demands much more than just progress. It requires every expression evaluate to a value, which so infinite, if we have infinite recursion or loops, then it doesn't evaluate into a value, even though it always progress forward. So oh, that's why uh, we just uh, we just can't uh, properly discuss the type safety with evaluation dynamics. Or oh, another point of view. Uh, is to instrument dynamics with explicit checks for dynamic type errors and to show that any expression with a dynamic type fault must be statically EU typed. I, I don't understand this sentence. Ugh. I thought it was confusing also, but I guess the next sentence is, makes more sense. <laughs> Yeah, restated in the contrapositive. This means that a statically well-typed program cannot incur dynamic type error. 
Yeah, I guess, but I guess it's confusing how to prove that, no. Uh, it's, yeah, it need to introduce some no, new notation. Knee question, knee question mark, question mark to state the expression is a temporary row. And yeah, no, it's okay. Um, bye. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so we need a, a, a lot of additional rules like like this one which completely annihilates the advantage of evaluation dynamics which is we can have less rules <laughs> and then we we need to prove that if if the expression goes wrong, then we don't have a type for that expression. And then we just have this colory, which is a contrapositive, which is if the expression has a type, then the expression doesn't go wrong. But but yeah, but this is this is too much. But it, this is a lot of rules to define, especially we only have we only have integers and strings for now. But in a real language with a lot of different types, then for all those types that don't make sense, we need to define it is go, it goes wrong. And we need to prove that. So, yeah, and I think he also mentions this like in advance. You probably don't know all the possible errors or like uh, incorrect things. So, yeah. yeah, and it doesn't give you any guidance. So you, you you can't you can still prove it even if you've missed some. Is uh... yeah yeah. So it's just error prone. <laughs> yeah, so to speak. Pardon the bun. Yeah, and especially like doing those kind of stuff. If let's say by hand, not by some, uh, some not by some program, then it's really hard to ensure our proof is correct this way. Because yeah, we we can easily like miss something, and then do the proof. And also the cost dynamics, which states the structural dynamics provide a natural notation of time complexity. And the evaluation dynamics does not because it's just one step reduction. So we can augment the evaluation relationship with uh, cost measurement resulting in uh, cost dynamics. I, I don't know how much useful this is like in the real case. Uh, because I, I think the semantics is completely different from what's how our programming will be implemented at the end anyway. So. This is not accurate, but anyway, we can do that. We basically just have evaluation judgment have the form like this, like augment by a number of steps. 
for value, it's just zero steps for uh, for like binary expression, it is one step plus the steps of uh, evaluate, evaluating the left hand side and the right hand side. And all the other rules are the same. For the lattice, also one more step. This is the by name interpretation, though. For the bivalent interpretation, is just uh, we need to evaluate even first. Yeah, it's also kind of like weird, or like I mean, maybe it's just to keep it simple, but like having plus and concatenation have the same cost, basically. Uh, no machine, <laughs> like in any machine addition will be much faster than concatenation. Yeah, the, the cost, this cost is just the same for the cost of one transition, basically. Then that's exactly what this statement, this theorem says. Yeah, I guess I, I'm just saying I don't. There's not much value in that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see much value in this. <laughs> it's I to be honest, I think this this kind of way to reason about runtime performance is completely wrong with stuff yeah. like compiler transforming the program and stuff like that. Yeah, and I mean, anyways, you should always have separate constants for different types of operations. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, based on the architecture, but yeah. Yeah, I likewise wondered what the point was. I guess it's sort of historical. Yeah, like... 1996, at that time, compilers are not that advanced that, yeah, I think so. This kind of reasoning, if like we have each step has different costs, then becomes somewhat reasonable. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, so as he's presented it, it's like you've got structural dynamics, which then you project onto some sort of evaluation dynamics. So you lose a bunch of information and then you add it back in, like from the point of view of the presentation here, you're adding it back in or you're adding part Yeah, of it it's like how and many steps you have basically. Yeah. But how many steps you have, it's not that useful. It just makes you wonder what the advantage of it is. And he anyway, says right there, it's, a, it's advantages, it's directness. Yeah. And the disadvantage is that it's not really useful for the kind of thing we're going to do in this book. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, it... so it is like the definition of standard ML actually, yeah, use the uh, evalu evaluation dynamics. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I guess if you all you care about is what happens to it eventually, you know, yeah, I, don't, I haven't read the direct, uh, the definition of standard ML. I don't know if many people read that. Yeah, well, I think I do have it. I think it's really available, but um, I, I guess it's like he says at the beginning, it's it's kind of useful, potentially useful for 